Welcome everyone to another episode of Rogers Tech Talk. In this video, I'm going to be showing off my ultimate smart doorbell setup. I'm going to start off with showing the setup in action, providing an overview of the configuration to help you set up something similar, and telling you my top lessons learned throughout my journey on this project. The high-level goals of the project are simple. Integration with Home Assistant, my home automation platform of choice, having a local doorbell with no dependencies on the internet, and being able to interact with whoever is actually at the door. While you might be familiar with big names in the industry such as Google Nest or Amazon Ring, there's a really good reason to look outside these mainstream companies. Specifically, I'm talking about smart doorbells that can provide a local video feed without a connection to internet. This ensures that no one's getting your video, I guess unless they come in your house and physically take it, which I guess could still happen, but back to why you shouldn't use a cloud service for your doorbell. A quick Google search will come up with lots of articles detailing incidents where customer privacy was breached. Ring was actually just found out handing over footage to the police without user's consent. Just the other week, a security researcher found out that Eufy, a Chinese-based company owned by Anchor, was actually sending data to the cloud when they promised not to. Personally, there's no way I'm giving a company access to my security camera footage, after, especially after incidents like this. So in this video, I'm gonna show my setup using an Amcrest AD410 Smart Doorbell with Home Assistant. To actually trigger the automations I'm gonna be demoing out, I'm using Frigate, which is an open source locally hosted object detection software. To top it all off, I'm gonna be using my beautiful Android tablet right here to actually view the video feeds in real time with the option of either sending a pre-recorded audio message or actually have two-way audio and talk to the person at the doorbell. The great thing about all of this is it all occurs locally on my network with no internet required. In this example, an automation is configured to switch the Home Assistant dashboards appearing on the Android tablets to one with the doorbell camera feed, buttons to send pre-recorded audio messages, and indicators showing the number of people detected outside. The automation is executed when Frigate detects a person on the front door camera. Since the doorbell isn't run in this example, I'm assuming that it's just a delivery person dropping off a package, so no loy of audio from the doorbell is outputted on the tablets. Switching over to the Home Assistant automation configuration, the trigger for this all kicking off is the front door occupancy sensor exposed by Frigate going from off to on. Moving over to conditions, the first one is to make sure that the automation runs only once within two minutes, and another condition that will stop the automation from triggering if the front door has been open within 20 seconds. This is to reduce false positives by somebody going to check for a package that's been sitting out there. Then we have actions to trigger synchronized audio throughout the house, and more importantly, the browser mod integration to navigate to a different dashboard on our tablets that will show the live feed from the doorbell. That feed will be up for three minutes, and then it will switch back to the existing dashboard screen. Since I'm using the person detection on Frigate to trigger the automations for my doorbell feeds to appear on my tablets, I tried to think, what type of automation could I create that's different when the actual doorbell button is pressed? Thankfully, my wife gave me the great idea to use the doorbell button press as a trigger to enable the audio feed from the doorbell to be enabled on the tablets. The dashboard includes three buttons to send pre-recorded audio messages through the doorbell. They are be right there, who are you, and please go away. Hey there, we'll be at the door in one second. Okay. To make this all work, you have to create a bash script for each of the pre-recorded audio messages you want to send through the doorbell. This will use the curl command to find the file that will be uploaded, the URL of your Amcrest doorbell, and then the last part is to make sure that that curl command doesn't hang after it's run. For each of the different bash scripts you create, you're going to define them under the shell command inside Home Assistant and then you can call them as a service to execute. So now I'm gonna demonstrate using the microphone and two-way audio through the doorbell. So first off, I'm just gonna hit the microphone button on my dashboard here. 
When the video screen comes up for two-way audio, by default, it's going to be muted, so I'm going to have to unmute. And hey, can you hear me? How does it sound? Pretty good, okay. Yep, sounds clear. Sounds clear? How's the weather out there? Pretty warm? Yeah, it's Florida, it's yeah. warm. Okay. So you wanna be outside a lot, okay. Thanks, appreciate it, come again. That looks simple, right? Well, not so much. The two-way audio implementation is a bit tricky as it requires Home Assistant and GoToRTC, the add-on I'm using to view the doorbell video in real time to be accessed with a secure connections for your browser. This means you need to configure TLS certificates for accessing both Home Assistant and GoToRTC. The reason for this is requirements by all modern browsers to require secure connections if the microphone is used on a website. Another issue that you're gonna run into is the audio feed from the Amcrest doorbell won't work by default when using WebRTC. The reason is the doorbell sends audio via the AAC codec, which isn't supported by WebRTC. If you're not familiar with WebRTC, it's a standard developed by Google that allows video to be streamed with pretty much no latency to your, for your web browser. The GoTo RTC add-on, which I mentioned earlier, takes the RTSP feed from the doorbell video and actually allows it to be presented as WebRTC. So to get around this issue, you have two options. You can either reconfigure the audio codec that the doorbell uses, or you can configure GoToRTC to automatically re-encode the audio in real time. Configuring the doorbell audio to a different codec is definitely the better option since you don't have to worry about configurations on GoToRTC. If you're wondering about the tablet I'm using, it's a Lenovo Tab M10 running on Android. I decided to standardize them since they have a sleek look, charging stand that you don't have to see the wire hanging off the side, and they're selling for cheap on eBay. And also, the screens are really good. Sadly, Lenovo stopped selling them, but hey, they still work. On my Home Assistant dashboard, I'm using the simple clock widget at the top. Below that, I'm using the button card, for the buttons that will send the pre-recorded audio messages to my doorbell. Below that, the microphone button will navigate to a different Home Assistant dashboard using the browser mod integration. This separate dashboard will allow for two-way audio. Below that, I have sensors for all the different areas outside my house, and these are adding up the person detection count on each of the different cameras and showing the, the total here. This video is sponsored by TurboDocs. Are you tired of building documents or presentations for your business? Wouldn't it be great if there was something that could help automate building proposals, design documents, or even legal agreements? TurboDocs is a document and slide deck templating platform that can help you make documents in just a few clicks. What they do is break down the template into small building blocks that can be reused over and over again. This really gives you a great starting point to move quickly and efficiently. When it's all said and done, you can crank out a proposal or any other document in under a minute. This way you can focus on what you're doing best, building cool stuff and leave their paperwork and presentations to TurboDocs. I've definitely learned a lot through the entire process setting up this Amcrest doorbell, but I wanted to share with everybody my three top lessons learned throughout the entire process. While the doorbell does work without an internet connection, Amcrest has a built-in mechanism to block it from working once the internet isn't detected after a short period of time. If you explicitly block the internet with your router as I did, you're going to need to fool the doorbell into thinking it's online. You can do this by constantly hitting a local API exposed by the device. I'm actually setting this up with an automation inside Home Assistant, and it's basically just using the curl command to hit the local API. It's simple enough, but an added hassle that you only find out by digging around the internet for a bit. Secondly, when I first set up the doorbell, the button outside on the doorbell stopped working after a bit. I got a bit worried the doorbell was broken, but thankfully I found a form post on the GoToRTC GitHub page with the answer. Once the doorbell is hit, it enables something in the RTSP protocol feed called the back channel. And this is what allows the two-way audio to work. However, once the back channel is active, it stops the doorbell button outside from working. So if you go into, um, if you're leveraging GoToRTC like me or anything else, and you're basically putting in the default RTSP URL, it's basically gonna stop making the doorbell button outside working after the first click. So the way to get around this is to basically create two separate entries inside GoToRTC, one with the back channel enabled and one with the disabled 
to allow the doorbell to function as you see in this video. Lastly, my idea for showing the number of people in the four areas outside my house really doesn't work well to say the least. Although the sensor information displaying the person count is made up of non-overlapping zones from my security system frigate, a person can still be detected in two zones and a lot of times it looks like there's more people outside than there actually is. This really defeats the entire purpose of what I was trying to do. So my next iteration of this is gonna remove the person count and just have a red or green indicator based off when a person has been detected on any of the cameras in that region over a certain period of time. I know I've talked through a lot of different configurations in this video. All of them are actually gonna be included in my GitHub page. If there's anything that I didn't post or everybody needs some further clarification on, just feel free to post a comment and I'll do my best to help everybody out.